man is a funny little scrunkly. You should kill yourself. Like most iconic mascots, he started off humble and skyrocketed to fame having quite the collection of games under his belt. And while we continue to get better ways to experience these old classics, I can't help but feel it's more of the same when you consider how Pac-Man used to get weird back in the day. Mass destruction, the closure of all chocolate factories, and the banning of kittens, perhaps. That's just phase one. Yeah, so as iconic as this guy is, it's kind of funny how most of the stuff doesn't actually come from Namco themselves, but from people that make ROM hacks and fan games. So for example, when you look at this Pac-Man, that wasn't made by Namco themselves. Solidifying itself is more than just a cheap spin-off. Exactly! You see, wait, how'd you get in here? Tay, next time that you decide to put a fake rock in your backyard, don't put a key under it, alright? It's just... Just a tad obvious. Come on, it's not that obvious. Anyway, then you have more recent examples, like the Championship Edition D Make for NES, which started as a fan game, was later taken in by Namco, polished up by M2, and then officially released in a compilation. So that brings me to another fan game that should, in my opinion, be part of the official Pac Man titles. Made by the Left Hand Man. Yeah, me, that's me. Let's go! The Pac-Man Bros is a continuation of the classic maze-like formula many of you will know and love. Elements such as the diverse layouts of Ms. Pac-Man and the wide-scrolling stages of Pac-Man Jr. made this game feel expansive and chaotic like a true arcade sequel. So, Left, what's your favorite Pac-Man game? Honestly, in my opinion, probably arrangement. I think it does the best to continue on from the original franchise without going too overboard. I'd honestly say it's a better spiritual success, even more so than Championship Edition. Well, rather than being another fan game that drops Pac-Man in a random environment, Left took a more risky approach and decided to make more original characters, redesign the monsters, and tie together the game's aesthetics with the sleek Neon City look. And I'll be honest, most of the time, original characters in fan games are kinda cringe, but it's tastefully done here in my opinion. Most notable is the introduction of two new Pac-Men, Johnny and Louie, brothers whose outfits translate really well to the game. Now I'm curious, how did you come up with the setting and characters in general? So for the setting of the game, now I'm going to shout out Away From Home, and it's literally just half Earthbound and half Rhythm Heaven. So if you're interested in either of those, I highly recommend you check them out. But once you see the characters from this game and the setting, you're going to be like, yeah, this is just a copy. In my defense, he did let me use the characters for the designs. He gave me permission to do so, so I'm not that big of a fraud. As far as the names go, I'm pretty sure they were just two random names that I chose. Johnny Johnny, the stupid Johnny Johnny meme was still somewhat popular so that's where I got that from and I remember for Louie I don't remember how we got into the conversation but a couple of my guys in discord were just talking about Elmo and I brought up the fact that he had a dad named Louie and he just he had the hottest drip of all time look at this man look at this man well just like regular Pac-Man your objective is to obviously eat all the pack dots on stage but that's easier said than done with four thugs on your tail and the ever-increasing difficulty amping up, sooner than later you're gonna find yourself caught in the streets of Detroit getting mugged. As far as I can tell, the AI for them is still pretty much the same, which is much appreciated as someone that plays a lot of Pac-Man. So left. How did you get started in game development making the Pac-Man Bros in the first place? Alright, so it's kind of a long story, but I'm going to keep it as short as possible. So basically, right, uh, I had a class in my college, so one credit semester, and it was literally the whole class, it was a coding class about just, just make something. Literally, that's it. Get in a group and just make something. What I made doesn't matter at all, uh, but what does matter is that one group made something that made the five-year-old in me cry a lot. They made Pac-Man, just like most fan games, suck, and it made me cry because what they specifically mentioned was the fact that the ghost AI was really bad, and after looking at it, yeah, it was like the most basic stuff. There was no strategy or anything. It's like a three-year-old coming at you with a, with a blindfold, so basically, I got mad about it. I didn't mention it to them, but I'm just like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go home tonight. I'm gonna do their entire project in one sitting 
just to show them how you make a real Pac-Man game. All I did was just look up one video within eight hours. I think I stayed up till like four in the morning doing it, but I was, I was devoted to showing this kid that I don't even remember what he looks like that I was better than him. Well, you know what they say, if you want something done right, you gotta do it yourself. One small change I found to be quite challenging and unique was how Red goes into this rage mode when there's like a few pellets left on stage, but Left cranked this anger to 11 and now makes a beeline for you no matter what. Good news is that not only the ghost juiced, but you are too! Look at this! So what are you waiting for? Download the Pac-Man Bros today for 30 easy payments of $0. This special internet offer is not available in stores or Steam. Just call or text 933-336-688777 to obtain your free copy. But wait! If you like and subscribe now, we'll throw in the second unreleased game for free. That's right, two games for the price of one. Side effects may include constipation, skin rash or dermatitis, diarrhea, dizziness, drowsiness, dry mouth, wet mouth, blood pressure increased, blurred vision while smoking crack, change in walking and balance, chest pain or discomfort, chills, thrills, thriller, Michael Jackson, dark urine, difficult urination, easy urination, dizziness or lightheadedness when getting up suddenly because you suck. That's right, ripped straight out of Dark Souls, we got the dodge roll. Wait, what's the name of this move again? <laughs> Well, thanks to my big mouth, it's apparently called the Detroit Dodger now. Yeah, this move is pretty much what it looks like, so instead of dodging by jumping, all you gotta do, spin up in a ball and shoot yourself forward, and you're good. You can look as cool as you want, but uh, this isn't something that you want to spam all the time. Not only can you not eat pellets while rolling, but you also bounce off the walls like an idiot. Yeah, so that pretty much leads to a high-risk, high-reward mechanic that you know I'm all for in any type of game. So now that we covered the basics, what makes this Pac-Man fan game different from the others in your opinion? So I don't know if you've noticed, but I decided let's just do some rules where it's like there's only one way to get extra lives. There's only like a certain amount of levels and you can't choose them. They're all RNG, etc, etc. I want it to be faithful by putting rules. You make it more like a sequel to the original games and something that's kind of think of it. I like to describe it as like the Sonic Mania of Pac-Man in a way. I also really love the details added to this game. Uh, first up is the fruits. In most Pac-Man games, it will either be static in one place or hopping along a path like Miss Pac-Man. But what's noticeable in this game is that not only do they move along a path, but when moving over other pellets, they get converted into those big or fat pellets. And anyone that's played Arrangement knows that this variation slows you down considerably, but it's worth more points. And speaking of Arrangement, this game also supports simultaneous co-op. <laughs> You loser! You're so lonely! You're gonna play it with me! <laughs> so, considering we had to use Parsec to play together, the experience was actually pretty good. It makes the game easier in some regards, but it also makes it all the more exciting when the only thing between you and a game over is your friend frantically trying to finish the Pac-Man letters to bring you back to life. You better bring me back to life like I did for you! I got the N-word pass. Also, another change, as we mentioned earlier, is how the lives work. Rather than reaching a point threshold to gain an extra life, it's now relegated to these Pac-Man letters at the bottom. If you catch them and fill out all the letters, then you finally gain an extra life. Yes! We're back, baby! We're back! It's, we've never been more back than before! Pac is black. While it sounds like this whole extra lives thing can be cheesed, it really can, because there's only about a 50% chance for a letter to appear on only one of the ghosts at a time. And when you get to the higher levels, forget about it. I gotta say, my favorite part is getting mugged. <laughs> Who doesn't love getting your shoes stolen in the streets of Detroit? I know I do! So, are there any hidden details you'd like to show us about your game? One thing that is hidden are two audio things. One of them being that when you die, it's the same sound effect, or I tried to replicate it, for when you lose a battle in Earthbound. And also, for eating ghosts, just pay attention and listen to this. A little off-script thing I just thought of at the last second. So, all the ghosts are named in the game. Why is 
Clyde different? Why is he called Jeff now? I don't know if you notice this a lot, but they really like messing up Clyde's name a lot. So in some games, he's just called something different. In some games, they mess up his name with Blinky, etc., etc. I wanted to kind of go with the trend, and uh, so his name is Jeff now. Why is his name Jeff? I don't know. So what would you say is the hardest part when making this game? There's a lot of hard things to a game. But for me, it's even doing it in general because I'm never motivated. So, well, do you have any future plans for this game? As of right now, probably not unless people really, really, really want me to do more, which I don't think I really have the audience for that. Stuff like this isn't easy to make, but what's presented here is honestly really fun. And there you have it, the Pac-Man Bros. A fun spin on the classic Pac-Man formula that looks good enough to be official. So with that said, where can we find you in the future if we ever want to find you or your games again left? You guys can find me on the Funny Bird app. I don't know if you've heard of it or not. It's called, I think, Twitter. And you can also find some games I make on Itch. Usually whenever I do a game jam, it'll go there. Well, I'm actually glad we have a way to find you, unlike other game developers I've tried to contact in the years past. One thing I want to say before the video ends is that I definitely want to give out a shout out to Cruz Elroy. He worked on Annalyn, and he was kind of the one that inspired me to kind of get back into work on this and get motivated in time for Sage 2022. Not only is it inspiring in the fact that he taught me that people still care about arcade games to date, but I'm pretty sure he also made the game in Game Maker, which is great. Game Maker Nation rise up, by the way. Annalyn! Amazing game. Um, I need to review that someday. Well, thank you all for watching, and as always, stay, stay lefty. No, stay foxy. Stay lefty. Stay foxy. Stay lefty. No, stay foxy, you Do idiot. Do not make me come over there and beat you to death. This is I my swear. video. I swear. I'm, I'm not. not I don't care, you. dude. It's about me. Get out of my. Get out. Get I, out. Actually, wait. Uh, you're the one that came into my talk. house. Get out. And then officially released in a compilation. I will never stop talking about this game, by the way, until it's considered a masterpiece. So that brings me to another fan game that should, in my opinion, be part of the game, having quite the collection of games under his belt. And while we continue to get better ways to experience these old classics, I can't help but feel it's more of the same when you consider how Pac-Man used to get weird back in the day. Mass destruction, the closure of all chocolate factories, and the banning of kittens, perhaps. That's just phase one. Yep. Excellent start. Thank you.